Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hem. I am so excited. McCall's fall patterns were finally released uh, maybe yesterday. Um, I was on my way back from Boston, um, kind of dealing with a bit of drama here with the hurricane evacuations, but um, McCall's is typically my favorite um, pattern company when it comes to design. Their designer, Jackie Polakoff, is just, to, in my opinion, right on the mark always when it comes to trends. Um, I just really, really love their patterns. So I'm very, very excited to see what they have for us today. So we are going to jump right in to the McCall's Fall First Impression Review. Okay, so first up, let's do it this way, is a Laura Ashley Mrs. and Petite dress pattern. Okay, so we have a long sleeve dress with a little um, necktie, and it looks like some layers going on there. Here is a shorter version with a variation on the collar. Here's some line drawings, cute. It's like a shirt dress with like a peasanty kind of skirt. Oh, and with a little slit going up one side. Just looking through some more of these pictures. Here's our line art. So we have this um, kind of very dramatic high collar, you know, giving a little bit of a nod to the Victorian thing again. Um, we saw that in the, oh gosh, there's been so many pattern patterns coming out lately. They're all mixing together. Was that Butterick or was it New Look? Maybe it was New Look um, that had that Victorian brocade dress. So Victorian sleeve cuffs as well. But then you've got this kind of like gathered skirt giving a little bit of a peasant vibe. So it's kind of a lot of stuff mixed in here. Um, Kind of like this is like your basic, you know, button up shirt dress, but then you have this really girly skirt. Um, I do think that the gathered and layered skirt is to me more fall than any of the other seasons, I guess. Um, okay, here's another one. This is a created pattern. I like the created patterns, you know, it's where you can kind of take bits and pieces from um, each dress and mi mix them together however you want. All the pattern pieces, um, when you actually go to sew it, are separate from each other. So it's very easy to kind of just pick and choose what you want your end design to look like um, and then just grab the specific element that you need to make that happen. So this has a um, ruffle strap detail. Um, it's also got these flutter sleeves with this wide collar, center front seam, some um, darts there. Then, oh, this one's nice. And you've got this sheer kind of crew neck um, illusion, you know, neckline with the, you know, main part of the bodice. There it is with no other embellishments, but an embellishment to the skirt. Interesting. This one is just a little, uh, a lot frilly, <laughs> very, very frilly to me. Um, lots of ruffles. So you can see here all the pattern pieces, one, two, four, and seven. I'm guessing one and seven are the bodice and skirt. And then um, two and four must be maybe this collar and the sleeves. And then three is the illusion, and then eight is the skirt bottom. So you can see how you can add them all together um, to create a different look, depending on which pieces you use. I do really like this one. I think that that is really, really great. I wish that they had one more pattern piece that made this an A-line skirt or a pleated skirt or something. Not hard to do yourself. You can pretty much swap any skirt um, so long as there's a waist seam, you can just mix and match your skirts. But it would be nice to have it all in one. Um, but this neckline is super flattering, super elegant, would be great for the holidays or, you know, any wedding or event that you had to go to. 
So yeah, cute, okay. Next, okay, look how pretty this crushed velvet looks. A plus for photographing that in a way that, you know, looks presentable. I think even maybe the color of the velvet helps a lot. But either way, back to the pattern. So we have a ton of ruching, ruching all the way from the bust line all the way down past your hip. And it looks like if you guys saw my um, sweater that I made that had that like shawl type thing with the gather detail and a bow um, around this area. It looks like that's how this is done too. This ribbon runs all the way up through here and back down again and you pull it up tight and it creates all this ruching. Very cute. Very well executed um, in this fabric too, I think. So here it is as a gown with no sleeves. And it looks like they didn't tie it off with a bow here either. So they maybe just have elastic running through. Here's the version she's wearing. That's really nice. I mean, it is figure flattering, but you guys, this, or figure hugging, but this stuff hides so many quote unquote imperfections or, you know, body types. <laughs> I don't want to say it in a negative term because like whatever figure you have is beautiful, but this will camouflage a lot of it that you may feel uncomfortable about, but it's all beautiful no matter what it is. So here she is again. I mean, look how great she looks. That is like so stunning for a party. Oh, even a little bathroom shot. <laughs> That's interesting. I guess just to show how the back is ruched too. Yeah, very, very elegant. I'm assuming this is just for knits. Um, pullover dresses have side gathers with either elastic or ribbon, sleeve variations, shaped hemline, and a side slit. Um, and then yeah, two-way stretch knits, velvet, jersey, interlocks, rayon spandex. Um, I also think you could pull this off in a very lightweight ponte or scuba. But I, I got to say, I really, this is the first time maybe ever I've seen a pattern in stretch velvet that I would actually want to wear. So excellent, excellent work with that. Very cute. Okay. Here is, oh shoot. Here is another long sleeve dress. I was realizing as I was packing for Boston that I really do have a shortage of fall dresses. Um, I found myself wanting to wear a dress, but all of mine were a little bit too springy, mostly due to fabric choice. So I really want to try and focus on making some dresses that are appropriate for fall, both in um, the style of them, but also in fabric choice. So here's one. It's long sleeves, um, sort of just your basic bodice and A-line skirt. And then I think we're just going to get a bunch of sleeve variations. But this one is like maybe with some kind of satin um, and then a sheer sleeve. That's executed also very, very well. Um, hemline pretty short, which is I think nice to balance out how covered up you are on the bodice. It's nice to show a little bit of skin on the leg. Okay, so here's our basic bodice, same sleeve, but a pleated skirt. Very nice. This has one of these hem details. I like the circle skirt. You don't really see those in patterns as much. Um, is this the pleated skirt with those ruffles or is that a paneled skirt? I can't really tell. Very nice. Sort of ill-fitting, but we can look past that considering they just make a sample and hope she fits into it. Um, yeah, so I think we just have the two skirt options. Yeah, the one, I'm assuming this is pleats, right? It's either pleats or panels. I'm having a hard time being able to tell. 
um, just from the line drawings. Judging by how wide it is on the hem, I'm thinking um, pleats, but line dresses fitted through the bust with sleeve and skirt variations and back invisible zipper, separate pattern pieces. Oh, it does have the um, bust, the different bust sizes. That's good. And A and B have pockets. Yeah, y'all think this is panels? I don't know. I can't tell. I'm, I'm going to go with panels. <laughs> But either way, you either have your little circle skirt here or your paneled skirt, and then one, two, three sleeve variations. So that's that guy. Um, okay, now we've got a little coat, or not so little coat, it's a very long coat. All right, so we've got a coat with no collar, just kind of like a scoop neckline, um, possibly zips up with some seaming going on. Not sure what I think about that. This one's cute with the hood and the fur, although, you know, kind of seen that one before. I might even have a pattern like that. Um, this one's very elegant. This reminds me of Meghan Markle. Um, but you've got these princess seams that go all the way up to the shoulder. Uh, instead of just going into the bust, they go all the way up. And then same thing for the skirt. You've got a two-way zipper here. A nice, elegant um, waist seam. Oh, fur on the sleeves. Cute. And this is a longer version. This is like all the way to the floor. I can see this maybe not out of a coating, maybe make it more of a coat again and do it out of like a sweater knit, I think would be nice. I guess it depends on where you live. You know she was hot the day they took this pic these pictures. <laughs> it is not cold enough in New York City. Um, to be wearing a coat, but that one is really cute. I do love a fit and flare coat. Here's some back views. All right, very nice. Here are our line drawings. How do you guys that make coats every year, do you just make one coat every year? Do you make multiples? How do you choose which one? I feel like, Coats are such a statement that, well, and they take so much time that you really could only make one a year. Okay, here is a fur coat, or this one is made out of fur, um, but it looks to be a um, notched collar. Uh, I can't tell if there's any closures here or not. Here, it's kind of like a blazer. There's a longer version. Here she is styled perfectly with um, leather leggings and knee-high boots. Keeping everything else simple because this is so bold. Wow, yeah. A coat pattern specifically for fur. That's very interesting. I wonder if they would give you lots of tips on how to sew with fur. There are some tips and tricks um, that are out there. And I wonder if they would... Um, illuminate those in the pattern. Okay, we've got a little pullover cape with a stunning collar detail. I love a stand-up collar. This looks great. Cute colors, very on trend with the gray and pink. Here's a solid one. Oh, here's an interesting one with a zip up. Now this is something that I would definitely make and wear for our weather. Um, just simply because layering is the name of the game down here whenever it gets to be like fall and winter. And depending on what fabric you make this out of, it could be all you need for winter. Um, you can throw it on over just about anything and then take it off whenever you get inside and warm up. Um, or as the temperatures outside go up, you could definitely, um, you know, just put it on and take it off as the temperatures go up and down throughout the day. 
I want to see a close up of this sweater or knit or do you think that I don't know that's a really interesting fabric I love that fabric it was definitely purchased that way but there you go so you have some different lengths I think this is a longer one and this is a shorter one and then you've got the zip de detail which I love especially with the exposed zipper tape um, and then you've got this one with the toggles I think this is cute. I love these ponchos. And I mean, how hard can that be to make? I would be torn though. I love this collar, but I love the zipper too. I guess I'd have to make two. Darn. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have some uh, Mrs. and Men's. This is a popular trend among sewing patterns lately to do a unisex pullover. Um, we just saw that with the new look patterns. So here is our. McCall's version. Um, it looks to be like a more like a sweatshirt or a hoodie. Um, you've also got these kangaroo pockets. They did this one in some kind of fur. His is in a camo, probably sweatshirt fleece. Basic sweatshirt. Sweatshirt with some details, a hood and a kangaroo pocket. Here she is in her fur. Here he is in his camo back views. Yeah, nothing exceptional in terms of like um, style lines or details there, kind of a basic, which is okay. Um, here's this. Okay, we have got another kind of version of a pullover top. Um, this one does have some other details to it, like this drop shoulder. I think they did a contrast fur on the sleeve, which is interesting, but it's also got this little like, kind of like oversized mock turtleneck. Oh, look, they did the sew on pearls like I did for my jeans in a lightweight, um, some kind of sweater knit. There's a, tur a full on turtleneck. Oh, they inserted that like alpaca type fur. That's interesting. Who was it, Indie? Which Indie company did this V insert a couple years ago? Was it the Norwegian one? Swedish one? I can't remember their Caprica? Is that their name? Somebody did something similar to this a couple years ago. Here's your full fur pullover. Yeah, fur is going to be really big this season. I got some fur on sale from Style Maker Fabrics. I'm not sure if she still has it or not. Uh, it came in and it's awesome. Sonny was very confused. He did not understand why there was an animal on the floor not moving. <laughs> okay, cute. Here we have, okay, here we have a woven top, kind of like an oversized half placket blouse, um, collars and everything. Very oversized though, or loose fitting. Um, very slouchy, kind of boyfriend feel to it. Um, it does have these drop shoulders. Another very popular trend this season is the drop shoulder. Lots of patterns coming out with those. Even more so than raglan or dolman, these drop shoulders are really kind of everywhere. They did a half tuck on this, so I can't tell if this is has this in the front or if it's literally that short. Um, we'll look at some line drawings here in a second. Here's the most basic version. This one reminds me of the Cali. Here's a long sleeve version. Here she is again. I do appreciate that they featured a plus size model, what or what I call a real size model. This is nice. This is very nice. I love that detail. Yeah, cute. Let's check out view D and see what's really going on with that. 
So C is a curved hem. And then D, that is D, right? Yeah. So D is short in the, right? It's hard to tell. D is short in the front and long in the back. So they did tuck it in, but not that much. I think D might have the same front piece as C. Yeah. Yep, yep. So cool. And then all the backs have that um, ruffle and yoke detail. Nice. Another sort of basic, but um, still stylish. I feel like this is something you would see in like Ann Taylor Loft. Um, you know, it is basic, but I think that made well and in the right fabric could be very stylish. Okay, now we've got, okay, a mock turtleneck with a one shoulder cutout, dolman sleeve, pullover top. Interesting. Okay. So we've got a couple sleeve options here. We've seen these sleeves for about a year now, or maybe at least since spring. Mock turtleneck, center front seam. Oh, okay. Center front slit. So you will expose your cleavage, can't wear a bra, and two exposed shoulders and a ruffle detail. Here it is in its kind of basic form. Very interesting. I could see myself making the this version D. Like I really could, especially in some of those knits. Like I'm assuming this is for knits. Um, in some of those like sparkly sweater knits, um, something that would make it a little bit more, yeah, moderate stretch knits only. Something that would make it a little bit more dressy, um, even in like a black fabric. It looks like this one's illustrated with maybe like a rib knit or something. I don't know, but you would need it to be draped because this is pleated. This is not a ruffle sleeve. This is a, actually a pleated sleeve. Um, I don't know if what I think about that. I might swap out the pleated, especially with this and this. I feel like the pleated sleeve is kind of a lot. So I might swap it out for just the basic sleeve, but don't be afraid of this. This isn't that revealing. I mean, I wouldn't wear it to work or anything, but to brunch for sure. I mean, why not? I don't know. This one is memorable. You know, it's one of those ones that I will have in my mind even after I finish um, looking at all of the patterns. And that means something, I think. Okay, here is a Palmer plush pattern. So you know that you are going to get some impeccable fitting with it and lots of tips and tricks for how to fit this properly. It is a little bit slouchy, a little bit oversized, but not too, too much. Um, in fact, this is a little bit long on her shoulder. I don't know if it's meant to be that way. I'm guessing not. Um, but it's got this really cool like wrap around detail. I think those turn into pockets maybe? Let's see if we can learn more as we look through the pictures. If this is a shirting, I think that that is brilliant. I think that's really clever. It's like fabric origami or something. Here is some contrast fabrics. That's kind of cool. Three different fabrics. Here she is out on the street in her cute outfit. Oh, and then you've got another little mid back detail here. Okay, so no, it does not tell us if they are pockets or what exactly is going on with them. But we've just got, I think the only variation on all of it style line wise is the sleeve. So you've either got this little bell, this little sleeve with a slit, you've got a sleeve tab, sleeve tab, or, and then this, maybe this is the sleeve tab unrolled. I don't know. You've got this long sleeve version too. Um, 
let's look into this and see if they talk to us about pockets. Um, semi-fitted button-down shirts have sleeve variations and shaped hemline. Wrong side of fabric will show. Hmm. No, they don't say whether those are pockets or not. So let's assume they aren't. Womp womp. Um, cotton blends, linen, polished cotton chambray. So yeah, they are recommending shirting type fabrics. But you could even go into like a rayon world here and make this a little bit more drapey. Um, not shally, but maybe a rayon cotton blend would be really nice. And you would just get a little bit more drape and kind of like loosey goosey fabric. But if you are using a shirting, you're going to get a really crisp look here. And this, I think, is just like taking your standard button down and just elevating it and making it super stylish and super cool and interesting where people know that like, well, maybe they don't know that you didn't buy it in a store, but they're going to stop you and say, what an interesting shirt. Where did you get that? You know what I mean? Like, they're going to see. And I think it would be really cool to see how this would all go down in a stripe or in a plaid. I mean, this version here, they kind of went into that, but I want to know if you used this stripe all over, you, what would happen to this little wraparound thing? You know what I mean? Like, how cool would that look? Would it be on the bias? Would it be just still vertical stripes? Like, I'd just be interested to see how that would work out, you know? Very interesting. Very thoughtful. All right. Next up, we've got another, yet another top. This one is, okay, your same button down. It does have a forward shoulder or front shoulder yoke. I can't tell if that's a, a yoke or a forward shoulder seam, but you've got these huge puffy sleeves with the exaggerated long cuff, a uh, shaped or curved hemline. You've got a bow detail, which you guys know I love a bow most of the time. <laughs> I don't know. It would just depend on fabric choice. This isn't really selling me on this one though. Uh, this is interesting. I love this little detail with like the, it's almost like a cowl sleeve. Can you call it that? A cowl sleeve? I think that's adorable and floral as well. Excellent um, illustration there. We've got a huge puffy sleeve. This is very kind of 80s to me. Here she is. Back yoke with some gathers. All right, so another, you know, every single um, option has the same bodice and just different sleeves, which I think is totally fine. I think you would learn a little bit, at least I think I would, about how drape and construction works, especially with that cowl. That sleeve pattern has to look very interesting when it's laid flat. Here's one that y'all know I'm going to love because it has a lace-up detail similar to what I did with that sweater, that um, J. Crew Inspiration sweater that I showed you guys in my makes. Very cute. This has um, a drop shoulder again, no bust darts or any kind of shaping there. Um, you're getting your volume just through the, the drop shoulder. Here it is with a collar and a sleeve ruffle and a kind of poofy sleeve and a long exaggerated um, cuff. Here she is with pleated hem. This has some like pickups. It's also kind of short. I'm not sure about proportion here. It's very voluminous here. And then, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. I do like all the different details. Maybe it's fabric choice. You know, maybe if this were like a little bit longer, also that would help. 
I like this one best and I kind of want to make it out of like a sweatshirt fleece. Let's see what kind of recommendations we have fabric wise here. Loose fitting top with drop shoulder has neck, length, hem, and sleeve variations and back hook and eye closure. Side detail with two part grommets and ribbon. Sleeve with pleat detail. And then all wovens. But, you know, it's just a suggestion. Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about how this would look on me. Um, she obviously has a very slim figure. Um, so I think that that, you know, does well for her to give her kind of more broad shoulders and then cinch in at the waist. I just don't know how that would look on an average person but I do love the details. This might be one of those things that you could make some modifications to, simple ones, like lengthening it, maybe adding a skirt, you know, cutting it off at the waistline and adding a skirt, maybe lengthening the back and giving yourself like a back long hem. I don't know. You'd have to like play around with it a little bit and think about your own body shape and what would look best on you. Okay. This is a jumper, which is very exciting. These have been around for a couple of years now. Um, gosh, I made one two, three years ago. I was in the old apartment. So um, yeah, they've been around in the indie world for a while. So our options are this kind of like peplum, right? That's your waistline, right? Um, and then like a little skirt, a, more of a flared skirt, which you know what? You really don't see that very often, not even in ready to wear. And someone who is pear shaped like me, that actually might look much better than a straight skirt, like so. Um, this one is very basic, but that's okay because you could get like a really cute patterned, like, you know, if you guys saw my new look ready to wear inspiration video, um, similar to how that brocade, um, you know, the fabric was such the integral part of that dress. Here's your more kind of traditional one. Nope. Very cute. Let's see that skirt. Yeah. That is interesting. Hmm. Fun. Okay. Cute little flirty skirt here. I mean, really cute, fun, flirty skirt. Got kind of like a mermaid shape to it where the ruffle extends up into the, this little like, like single princess scene, kinda. Um, there it is with a lace up, love, and like a little flounce. Here it is with a two layer flounce. Three layer flounce, how high will they go? <laughs> Are you gonna get four layers? No, just up to three. And it looks like we've got single back darts here. Kind of long though, which is nice. I like a longer back dart. All right, so we've got our you know, flounce up into the princess seam with a single layer. You've got a single layer flounce hem with lace up and then a two layer flounce with no detail in the princess seam and then a three or a two layer flounce with the princess seam flounce added on top for three layers down there. I don't know where you're going in this, but it's a party I want to be at. Probably lots of dancing, lots of shimmying. <laughs> it just looks like a lot of fun. Um, I do love how they did it in this um, kind of like a suiting, but I imagine that the kinds of fabrics you can use are pretty varying. Um, wool crepes, suiting fabrics, crepes, wool blends, 
and then lining fabrics. I don't know. I think you can even go further than that. Um, very lightweight versions of corduroy, of leather, of especially this one in leather, I think would just be like a knockout. Very, very lightweight though. You need to be able to get this straight. You do not want it to be like sticking straight out like that. Um, yeah, you could do a lot of fun things with this one, I think. Cute. Very cute. All right, we are still rocking and rolling. I think we've got three more by all accounts, but let's see. This looks like a pleated skirt. Okay, a pleated skirt with an elasticized waist. Brilliant, brilliant execution here, showing it with this like gold lame. That's one of those fabrics you probably walked by a thousand times and said, what would I ever make out of that? Well, this stunning, expensive looking skirt is what you would make out of that. This would sell for hundreds of dollars at J. Crew, Anthropology, any of those stores. Paired with this like ballet top, I mean, super cute. Here's a shorter version, a mid-length mid version, and then a maxi version. That is a lot of plating though. You become good friends with your iron with that one. I know they say learn to sew for fun. Oh, level two, I see. Yeah, I would say that is a level two for sure. For sure. Lots and lots of pleating. You become a pro at pleating with that. Practice makes perfect. Okay, now we've got, gosh, our only pair of pants. Our only thing with a crotch so far. That's very interesting. Okay, um, so this looks to be like a velvet. Uh, it looks to sit kind of low on the waist. Um, a simple band and a bell pant leg. Then we have her in a skirt. Very attractive with this pencil shaping. Very cute. So here's a, I guess the knee length version with a little side slit. These must all be pull-on pants, which makes me think they're all knit. You know, you would use like, you know, it would be like a yoga pant kinda, but dressier. Oh, again, pretty basic, a learn to sew for fun pattern. Nothing really to it, but if you've never made pants or leggings before, you know, maybe you would want to start with this, then starting with something super complicated. Um, but definitely these are all pull-on. They don't have any um, zippers or flies or anything like that. Super, super basic. Excellent. Okay. Oh. All right. So we've got a legitimate bag pattern. So you can see here it's got something interesting going on. I can't really tell. I'm not as well versed in bags as I am in clothes, but this is interesting. Very cute clutch, super cute. I would totally buy that from a store. Um, here they are with this little interesting closure thing. Don't know what to call it. A wristlet, a tote bag. The clutch is awesome. That version's really cute too. Wow, interesting. I don't even, I wonder how many, like how much help you get um, in terms of sewing with leather or, you know, whatever these other fabrics are. Like, what is this? It's like a woven something. Oh. It's like a basket weave or something. Um, yeah, nothing special. All bags are lined with inside pocket. Synthetic leather, synthetic suede, denim, canvas, 
cotton blends for the lining. Yeah, that's really all they say. I might do a pattern review on this just so we all can learn a little bit more about big four bag patterns. Have y'all ever made one like this before where it's like, you know, not kitschy and like made from quilting cottons, but actually designed for leathers and stuff? Let me know. Okay, so now we've, oh, David Tutera made this cute little furry vest. Okay, little girls clothes, kids toys, and costumes. Oh my gosh, let's just end looking at the cute dog clothes. Um, my goodness. Um, all right, so that's going to do it for the McCall's Fall um, pattern first impression review. I'm very interested to see what you guys think about some of these patterns. Honestly, they're... <laughs> oh my gosh. Honestly, there are very few of them that I would not add to my pattern collection for one reason or another. I pretty much liked them all. Um, it would just be a matter of designing them first, finding some fabrics that I like, applying that fabric to the appropriate pattern, um, and then making decisions from there. Cause I can't, I'm not going to buy all of these, but some of them definitely piqued my interest, definitely would fit into my pattern collection, um, and not be too similar to something I already have. So that is really exciting. And with that, I am going to let you guys go. Leave in the comments what you guys think about this. Um, let's chat. What do we like? What do we not like? What are we thinking about the fall trends? Um, so on and so forth. But until next time, that's going to do it for me. I will see you all very soon. Bye.